Hello and welcome to today's Postgrad Insights UK Festival session. Today in association with the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, part of the University of London. Now, as you will know if you watched yesterday's session, um, today is a live session. It will be hosted on our website afterwards on demand. Um, so if you have any questions on this live platform on Zoom, please send it through to the Q&A section at the top or the chat facility. If you're watching on Facebook Live today or on LinkedIn, please send your questions through via the Messenger facility or via the chat facility. Uh, we will try and monitor it as best as possible. Um, if we don't answer your question, we will ensure that we answer it afterwards. I can see there's a fair few of you watching on Facebook Live as we speak, so please do ensure that you send through your questions. They will still try to be answered. Um, also, as well, by signing up to this session, you are given permission to all UK festival partners and postgrad insights as well to contact you moving forward for any communications via uh, marketing or via any other means. Um, a little bit of insight into what today is going to bring you um, to top 10, top 10 reasons to study in the UK, specifically around the performing arts. Um, we'll have a special presentation from our um, sponsors today, uh, Central School of Speech and Drama, postgrad.com, a chance to win £500 of your tuition cost, which we just go through who is eligible and what is coming up in the future days and weeks for Postgrad Insights. So what is the performing arts? I, I will brush over this quickly because I know that Scott, who is presenting on behalf of our sponsors today, will be running through the performing arts and creative arts as well. Um, but essentially, um, it's broken down into th three, four different kind of aspects. So we've got the dance, the act and the music and behind the scenes. Um, you can see there all the different uh, subject specialist areas that follow those specific subject uh, interest. So please do head over to the postgrad website if you've got more any any more questions on that. Um, alternatively, ask today's host um, from the Central School of Speech and Drama, Scott. Ask any questions. Head over to their website. Uh, and if you're unsure about anything else, please do let us know. Now I'd like to hand over to Scott because I'm just conscious that of time. I'll be back at the end to explain a little bit more about postgrad, about what what opportunities we've got coming up. But Scott, over to you for now. Any issues or questions, let me know. And um, look forward to seeing you in a little bit of time. Brilliant. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm going to uh, share my screen very quickly. And. So hopefully everyone can see this now. So yes, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Scott Bellamy. I am the head of marketing and student recruitment at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about postgraduate study in the creative arts, talking specifically about the performing arts. So I'm going to start off by just saying a little bit about Central. So Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, part of the University of London. Uh, we often shorten that name to Central. So uh, you may hear uh, that come up quite a little bit uh, today. Uh, but we are uh, based in London in the UK. Um, and our institution uh, is all about drama and theatre. So we prepare students for a range of careers that range across the performing arts, theatre, drama, uh, screen work, so film and television, live events, uh, a real multitude of performance forms. We are a very um, old institution, we've got a lot of history. We were actually founded in 1906 in the Royal Albert Hall uh, and we moved to our current uh, campus in the 1950s, which was actually an old uh, working theatre for much of the uh, 20th century. Uh, we are a small specialist institution, so we're around uh, 1,100 uh, students, all studying on courses that are associated with drama and the performing arts. And we offer courses that run across the whole spectrum of both study levels, but also across all of the different areas of drama and performance. So as you'll see uh, here, we have three undergraduate degrees, so bachelor's degrees, and then we have 13 Master of Arts degrees, seven of which are also available as MFA, so Master of Fine Arts. We also, which is quite rare for a small specialist institution, offer PhD study as well. So the creation of new knowledge that we feel is helping to shape and evolve the industry of the creative and performing arts. So we have around 38 PhD students currently who are creating that new knowledge, looking at very different areas 
of theatre and performance. I think a really important thing to mention is what we are there for, what, who, who is central, what, what are we about? And our mission is to inspire, educate and train the performers, practitioners and change makers of tomorrow to shape the future of theatre and the performing arts. And I think that's really important. And I think more important now than ever before, really, after a global uh, pandemic, as we're obviously uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, coming out of the other end of that, the future of theatre and the performing arts has never been more crucial. And we're seeing uh, so much new content being created across different mediums. And so our role as a school is really crucial for helping to nurture and influence that next generation of talent, but also that next generation of ideas. And those ideas and that talent comes from across the world, across society, um, and it's about bringing together people who all have that passion for performing arts in the various different disciplines. Excellence in this area requires diversity, and this brings richness, knowledge, innovation, new understanding and skills. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how our kind of really, really wonderful international population helps to enrich the learning of students at Central in just a little while. But I think what's really important is by celebrating and respecting our different cultures, abilities and identities, we do shape a better future for the arts and society, something that our founder, Elsie Fogarty, who founded the school back in 1906, had as her original aim when uh, forming the school. So it's a really important point about the kind of institution that you would be looking at, at a, when you're looking at a place like Central. I mentioned that international reputation and Central is known across the world. Uh, we have a number of really notable uh, graduates who work across those creative industries, many of whom you may have heard of from the realms of film and television. Uh, but students, they come from across the globe we actually auditioned an interview in the last few years uh, in all continents. So we've been to South America, to North America. We've auditioned in Australia, in Singapore. We really do like to invite and, and see talent from across the globe. And we feel that uh, people who come with that experience of different theatre and media forms are able to really bring a wonderful experience and skills and knowledge into the classroom here at Central. And what's great is that students can take that work back to their own country upon graduation. But of course, there's also the graduate visa, which is also worth considering, which allows you to stay in the UK for two years after uh, completing your studies. That's something to think about when you're thinking about that later career progression after completing your studies at Central. We're also very lucky in the sense that partly because of our international reputation, we get visiting academics, so professionals from the industry who come from across the world. We get them to come into Central physically, uh, but also we are able to get uh, even more through this pandemic uh, through online formats as well. So that's been a really great aspect of what we've been able to bring to the student experience over the course of the last uh, 18 months to two years. But we get regular professionals coming in. It's a core part of the learning at a small specialist institution like Central. And in addition to those industry professionals and visiting academics, we also have our own full-time staff, our own academics who are leaders in their field. And they're leaders in their field in a number of different ways. Uh, some are very research active and we, uh, and like many uh, traditional larger universities, we take part in what's called the research excellence framework. And we get a very, very large amount of our research classed as world leading. I talked about creating that new knowledge to drive the performing arts industry. In the teaching excellence framework, we are a gold standard institution. So you can be confident that the teaching that we do provide on our courses is of the highest quality. A number of our academics are award winners. Um, in fact, in the last couple of years, uh, one of our academics, Dr. Nicola Abraham, uh, won a Guardian University teaching award uh, for her work uh, working with dementia patients, incorporating augmented and virtual reality. So really at the cutting edge of drama and performing arts and how we can use drama 
to change lives. And there's a course I'm going to talk about a little bit later that touches on that in a bit more detail. And finally, a number of our academics are actually practicing in the industry. So when they're not teaching, they're out there uh, making work with other professionals. And some of them are even writing the books on the subjects in which they're teaching. So they are truly leaders in their field. Of course, you don't come to a place like Central without thinking about your career and how a course, a degree at Central is going to enhance your career. And our students, they go on to do absolutely amazing things. You may have heard of a number of our graduates that include the likes of Judy Dench or Riz Ahmed or Naomi Aki or Martin Freeman. But there are a number of other students across, especially across our MA courses, who have gone on to incredible uh, careers. So Nick Trumbull, who was a voice studies uh, graduate, uh, has worked on uh, a series of The Crown, um, whilst we have other students who are working in schools in Mumbai, in India, for instance. We have students who have worked um, as movement coaches on feature films like Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, so we have a real range of different students who go into different careers uh, within the performing arts and across the different industries. And that relationship with the professional industries is a standard thing that we offer and students they benefit uh, whilst at Central but actually after they graduate from Central from those networks that they build whilst on the course. Workplace attachments so placements and, and work experience for some courses is a key aspect of that learning experience so uh, courses like drama and movement therapy includes a number of clinical placements within the N within NH NHS settings uh, whilst applied theatre uh, that actually allows for uh, outreach projects uh, in the UK, but also um, further afield across the world. And I talked about that graduate visa for international students, which is a real key uh, moment, I think, for students coming to study in the UK. And we can't talk about that without talking about our central London location. We're excellently placed. Uh, we're in the borough of Camden, but also uh, near to Hampstead. We're 15 minutes from the West End. And for those of you looking at uh, performing arts or creative arts in general in the UK, London is a real cultural hub uh, with museums, galleries, theatres, so many kind of cultural experience opportunities that we really encourage our students to take advantage of and immerse themselves um, in. And London, of course, as a transport hub, as a transport link to other parts of the UK and even other parts of Europe, is a wonderfully positioned location uh, for international students coming to study in the UK. As you'd expect, um, our wonderful training kind of matches with first class facilities. And we'll talk a little bit about some of these um, in, in, in the next few moments. So we have uh, a main house embassy theater, which is um, our kind of premier performance venue, but we have a number of other licensed performance venues, including our new Courtyard Theatre, which is part of our brand new £16 million building, uh, which although it opened in February 2019, uh, it still feels very, very new uh, to us uh, using it now. We have a number of workshops and studios, including rehearsal rooms. Uh, you'll see in the photo uh, in the middle here, uh, our paint frame, which is where we build and we paint the sets for our performances, Whilst you also see in the bottom left-hand corner there, uh, one of our large uh, movement spaces with sprung floors, sound systems, and soundproofing. So we have a real range of different facilities, equipment, and resources to support really high level learning of our students on our courses. And regardless of the course you're on, you will have access to these high-class facilities. I want to touch very briefly on the MFA year, and this is a key uh, point around uh, courses at Central. So I mentioned earlier that we have 13 MA courses. Now, 12 of those are one year MA courses that are available. Uh, one of those, the Drama and Movement Therapy course, uh, quite rarely is a two year MA. Uh, and that's due to the length of the course and the number of workplace attachments. But seven of our courses are also available as a two year long MFA okay and this is a this can be a really useful qualification for students so as you'll see in here it is seen as a terminal degree in the US so the highest kind of uh, 
uh, level that you can train to. But increasingly in Europe, if that's an area, a place where you're looking to take your career, it is becoming increasingly popular as a qualification. And what it allows really is it allows an opportunity, more time to immerse yourself in your subject uh, area and to hone that practice further. And often with the MFA year, you will have a lot of that time will be spent not necessarily in the classroom as such, but it'll actually be spent out on what we call workplace attachment. So again, really honing your practice, but in a really practical way, uh, in, a, in a way that is appropriate for that course area. So something to, um, to think about when looking at central courses. So now I'm gonna talk very briefly about those courses, about the range of MA courses that we offer at Central. And we believe we offer the broadest portfolio of drama, theatre and performance related programmes. And we think that's uh, the broadest range across Europe. I'll go through each of those individually quite briefly, and then we can go a bit further uh, if we have any questions about any in particular. So we divide them into a number of different areas just to kind of uh, give a bit more context as to what they kind of look at. So our first area is in coaching and specialist direction. So our first one is our MA or available as an MFA in actor training and coaching. And what this course does is it trains you to, teach, to train and coach actors. So it's not training you to be an actor, but it's training you to coach other actors. Uh, this can be a really great program um, if you're looking to either teach, uh, it can be really helpful uh, if looking to direct, but at its core it is about training and coaching uh, actors. And we get a number of um, students on that course who will go on placements, for instance, in other drama schools, other very reputable uh, drama institutions uh, in the UK and beyond. Our MA, MFA in movement directing and teaching is all about training you to be a movement director. So that might include areas of choreography, but we're, we regularly get, regularly get uh, graduates who go on to work both in theatre, but also in film and television, providing movement directing to the actors and to the, uh, the cast of those uh, performances. And similarly, MA, MFA voice studies, teaching and coaching, trains you in an essence to be a vocal coach, a vocal that could include a dialect coach, for instance, uh, again, who will work on a range of different kind of types of performance. So that uh, will include, again, film and television, theatre and more. And all these three courses have produced real kind of leading graduates in these areas. Our next area is probably the area that you may be most familiar with. It's probably the most well-known area, but that's what we call our conservatoire um, area. And that looks at our courses that cover the areas of performance. So acting in a nutshell. So we have an MA classical uh, acting, uh, an MA contemporary acting course, MA acting for screen and MA music theatre. So I'll go through each of those individually. So uh, the MA acting classical and MA acting contemporary, very similar in terms of what they're trying to achieve, but the way in which we get there is ever so slightly different. Uh, and classical looks more at uh, more classical texts. Uh, it does bring a range of classical and contemporary actor training approaches, but you will work predominantly with more classical text pieces. Acting contemporary, on the, on the contrary, uh, looks at a more contemporary kind of actor training approach, but looks at more contemporary um, plays and texts that you will work with. They are very theatre based. You will get some kind of uh, work in screen based work, but it's not the focus of that course. It is a theatre first course um, and will train you to be an actor that can work across mediums. Our MA acting for screen, as it says in the title, really focuses on training you to perform in front for film and television. So this isn't training you from scratch to be an actor. Um, we do often uh, require people to come in with previous acting experience or skills, but it's training you specifically to act for camera. Um, and our students on that course produce a, a wide range of different kind of uh, pr produce from their course, including short films, many of which actually do get entered into uh, short film festivals uh, in the UK and beyond. And then our MA Music Theatre brings uh, a range of different skills. So acting, singing, dancing, um, but also kind of musicianship as well. So it's really about uh, looking at that complete performer who can work again 
in the West End, in kind of musical work, but also across other medium and other kind of performance types as well. So again, four courses that really focus on developing you and developing your performance skills uh, for a range of different mediums. We then have our performance laboratory courses, which are very much an experimental laboratory for you to bring your creative voice uh, to the fore. We have two of these. We have MA, MFA, Advanced Theatre Practice, uh, where regardless of what skills you're bringing in, uh, you may have skills uh, in performance, you may have skills in other areas uh, that might include um, areas of um, production, areas of uh, lighting, all sorts of different areas. It's about bringing these skills together, bringing people together to create performance and experiment with new types of performance. And we often actually get a number of um, theatre companies that kind of uh, form out of this course and go on to do some really incredible and groundbreaking work. And the great thing about the Advanced Theatre Practice uh, course is, as it, as it says in, in the kind of uh, title, it is about taking things to a new level, exploring new forms of performance. So it really allows you a, a, a canvas to experiment and innovate uh, with new kind of performance types, but also new performance as well. Our MA MFA sonography likewise really allows you to have a creative authorship of your work, looking very much at the area of sonography, which includes kind of design elements, but it also looks at the relationship between space and an audience. And there's some really incredible work that goes on in that course, some really out of the box, groundbreaking thinking about that relationship between space, performance and audience. And that course allows the students to create their own practical work and actually take part in exhibitions and festivals as well, which often take over uh, Central and are very, very exciting to, to watch if you, are, um, if you are attending those. And then our final area is in theatre and social practice. So we have our MA Applied Theatre, which takes the concept of applied theatre, uh, which is using drama uh, for social or educative change. So it's about how can we use theatre and drama to change lives. And there is some absolutely incredible work that goes on uh, in that course across the UK and beyond, uh, working in uh, with homeless um, organizations in New York, all the way to working with schools in India. Um, there is some absolutely incredible work that goes on in that course. And that course also benefits from exclusive Levy Hume funding to actually part fund uh, some of those, some of that work as well. Our MA Drama and Movement Therapy is all about drama therapy. It's all about using drama uh, and, 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 and using uh, therapy, sorry, uh, as a way of improving people's life. So that does um, include kind of using um, Jungian kind of approaches and then also kind of um, working within NHS settings with patients. So using drama as a therapy tool to improve lives. The MA MFA Creative Producing uh, looks at developing you as a producer that can work across mediums, across different um, platforms, to create performance. So uh, that could be anything from uh, organizing and uh, creating festivals all the way to um, pitching and commissioning new performance types. So that looks at the whole role of that producer in a creative setting. And then our MA, MFA Writing for Stage and Broadcast Media uh, looks at kind of playwriting, screenwriting, script writing for those different mediums as well. So developing you as a writer and that particular course um, has uh, maybe not um, surprisingly uh, really grown in popularity. Creative producing and writing um, I think as areas have become extremely popular uh, over the last 18 months to two years especially as people are looking to generate and create new content uh, more so than ever before. In terms of applications, um, Applications for our MA courses are made direct through our website. I should say that our MA Acting Classical, our MA Acting Contemporary, and our MA Music Theatre, those courses start in January. So the next start date uh, after January 2022 will be in January 2023. The other courses, all of those other courses will begin in October 2022. So applications for those courses are open now. 
In terms of how we select for our courses, we do either audition or interview uh, applicants in order to uh, assess whether suitability for the course um, is right. And so we do try and audition and interview as many people uh, as we can. And all of the courses have slightly different um, requirements in terms of previous experience, whether that be uh, academic qualifications or previous kind of uh, practical experience kind of uh, in the industry. These uh, auditions or interviews may well be online via Skype or Zoom. That's not something that is new to us. It's something we were doing long before um, the, the global pandemic, um, but they might be online via Skype or Zoom, or uh, if you are in the UK or around kind of areas near the UK and would like to come to the UK for that audition or interview, that uh, often can be arranged. Uh, different courses will have slightly different requirements uh, for the coming year. So I would advise to keep a close eye on our website for that. And in most cases, you will be asked to prepare certain things ahead of your audition or interview. So for some courses, it might be for uh, acting courses, for instance, we would very likely ask you to uh, prepare monologues or songs or self tapes. Um, or whereas for other courses, like the movement course, for instance, we may ask you to plan uh, and deliver a, a, a lesson, a kind of a session uh, for other people. Uh, in advance of your interview. So it's a range of different requirements. All of those requirements are available on the course pages as are the application links. I want to talk a little bit about scholarships and bursaries. Um, it's a question we get a lot, uh, uh, we get asked a lot uh, about. Um, we have a real range of different scholarships and bursaries that are available for applicants to apply to. Um, applicants aren't able to apply for these scholarships and bursaries uh, until they have an offer of a place on the course. So we do um, put a request to apply for a scholarship and bursary out in April, and then another one in August to all of those people who have been made offers. And the range of scholarships and bursaries uh, is quite great. So it can range from anything between a thousand pounds for some, uh, our embassy scholarships, the awards are often between two and five thousand pounds. Whereas we have Levy Hume scholarships, for instance, and other named scholarships, which are up to 10,000 pounds each. We also have one uh, international student scholarship, which is a full fee paying uh, scholarship as well. Um, so that's another one that we, we have uh, in addition. Um, we also have a subscription uh, to the Guide to Postgraduate uh, uh, Scholarships, uh, which is an external website which helps with uh, searching for um, postgraduate scholarships and postgraduate students. Uh, that's something that will be live on our website quite soon, links to that. Um, and of course, there are other external websites as well that you can look at for scholarships uh, and bursaries and other awards. And we would really encourage you actually to look at, as part of your planning and research, look at external um, award uh, opportunities, because of course you can have uh, an award from Central and an award externally as well. A little, I'm going to touch on accommodation quickly. So there's a number of different options for uh, accommodation. Uh, while some of our UK students might live at home and commute if they are based in and around London, what a lot of our international students tend to do is either to go into or apply to go into University of London intercollegiate halls. So we do get a, an allocation of rooms from London, uh, University of London halls. Um, a number of our students alternatively might look to go into private uh, halls of residence. There are a wide range of private halls of residence uh, in and around the London area at very different price points and at different locations across the capital. So the nearest one uh, to us is actually only uh, two, uh, two tube stops away, about a 15 minute walk from Central, that's called uh, Nido West Hampstead. Whereas there are others in Wembley, for instance, which although geographically quite far away, is again, only two stops on the tube, that's at Wembley. So I'd definitely recommend looking at private halls. They can be really useful for international students, um, but also can be really useful if um, you'd actually quite like to live uh, alongside students who maybe are not learning on or training on a course in the performing arts. That can be really useful for some people. And we also have a number of our students who live in private rented accommodation. And we have a lot of support in place uh, for students when searching for accommodation uh, when studying at Central. Uh, our University of London partners also provide a lot of resources and support uh, and actually have a University of London housing service, which provides uh, kind of pre-vetted, pre-checked uh, houses and accommodation options. 
Again, just in touch very quickly on our English language requirements. That's a really important um, thing for uh, our international applicants. Um, and so if you are not from an English uh, speaking country or English is not your first language, then we do uh, have English language requirements which make up part of your offer to study with us. So our required level is C1 in the Common European Framework on, for reference uh, for languages. But in order to uh, achieve that level, you can take any UKVI approved test because obviously you require that test as part of your proof of your application for your visa. So it's one of what we call secure English language tests. And there's five options there um, below, which are the approved tests that you can take. Now on our website, we have what the equivalent score is on each of those tests that you would need to meet in order to meet that C1 uh, level. But those are the five kind of approved tests that you could use um, in order to prove that, that English language proficiency. You don't have to prove that uh, like as soon as you apply. It's usually a condition of your offer. You usually would need to show us evidence of, of, of hitting that English language um, level um, by around the start of August or in time for us to generate your CAS, which is your confirmation of acceptance to studies, which is a prerequisite for your visa application. And the last thing I wanted to just talk about is um, some of the upcoming sessions we have. These are online sessions that we're hosting uh, on Zoom, which look in a bit more detail at some of those individual course areas featuring the course leaders or a course tutor on that course. Uh, and you'll see those dates there. You can see all of these on our website and you can actually sign up to those on our website as well. But you'll see a number of our MA courses are represented here. Uh, as I say, they are, we've tried to place those at times that allow uh, access for a variety of different time zones, but they're a really useful way. They're about an hour long session and a really useful way to find out really in-depth information about some of those courses um, and what the work is that they're producing. Uh, and we try and share as many experiences of our students as we possibly can, but you can see those dates, you can see how to sign up for them on our website at cssd.ac. Dot UK, which is just here on this last slide. And what I'll do is I'll end it there. That's a really quick uh, kind of whistle stop tour, really, of the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama uh, in the University of London. Uh, and I think I'm passing back over to Gareth for the questions. Very useful, very knowledgeable, and um, a great insight into not just the, the industry itself, but the whole application process as well. So thank you for that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to run through a few questions that we've got um, come in, but um, I've got a few questions off the back of the presentation, if you don't want me asking, um, that I think could be very important. Um, you mentioned, obviously, about accommodation. Um, obviously, there's the private rented, there's the halls from the University of London that you're allocated, and there's also the, the private student accommodation um, option as well. At the moment, students are can be quite sceptical and concerned and worried because of COVID at the moment, which is completely understandable. We get these questions all the time. What what would you say to those students that are worried about coming? You know, if they're like if they're from a closed country at the moment, they have to isolate. You know, it could be that they're not the most confident in terms of, you know, making sure that they keep in touch. You know, it can be difficult in mental health. What are you guys doing at the moment as an institution? maybe as part of a bigger organization to help out? Yeah, it's a great question. And it's one we get a, a lot actually. So uh, obviously as an institution, we are um, looking closely and following kind of NHS, uh, Public Health England and government guidelines uh, where we can. So where it comes to um, closed countries, for instance, we're working with our applicants and our students who are from those closed countries in, in the first instance to reassure uh, that you know, their learning will not be uh, adversely affected and to work with them to make sure that they have a plan and we can work with them to put that plan in place for their arrival in the UK and how we can kind of help with that learning. Through the pandemic um, we were able to have quite a good amount of flexibility with our international students, some of whom who were not able to necessarily come uh, to London to the UK uh, in the first instance and whilst there were uh, we used elements of online learning to, to help with that. A number of those students were then able to come over to the UK. And on a number of those courses, actually, we did run uh, catch-up sessions um, for the students to make sure that they had uh, the most optimal experience and an experience that was able to support their learning. Now, at Central, we do have, I would say, quite um, 
not strict, but we have very secure measures in place on our campus to ensure that our case rates are as absolutely low as possible because we appreciate the impact that even one positive case can have on a cohort, on a group, especially given the type of training that we are doing at Central. Uh, you know, with performance training, for instance, projection, working in close proximity with other performers, it's really important that we have as safe a campus as we possibly do. So we have mask mandates on campus, for instance, we do need proof of uh, negative lateral flow tests from the last 72 hours for all students and all staff, because from our point of view, the safety of and well-being of our staff and students is key. Our student centre, our student advice service and our kind of student hub is also on hand to provide uh, support for our students. So that goes from accommodation search and accommodation support, but all the way through actually to our free uh, counselling service that, that is available both on campus and online. So there's a real range of different support mechanisms that we have in place. And we say to students, um, really have that conversation with us as early as possible, because being a small institution, one of the benefits of that actually is that we're able to give more personalized support yeah. to students as opposed to a kind of out of the box kind of one size fits all. So um, we get students, of course, who have very different circumstances. And these circumstances can crop up, you know, at any time, even if you're just about to board the plane, circumstances can still crop up. So we're here to support our students. We're here to have those conversations on an individual level to make sure that students feel both supported, but feel able to concentrate on the training aspect, which is, of course, what they're here for. Of course. Yeah. And I think it's important to remember for the students as well. London is a very cosmopolitan city. Um, you're not going to be alone. You know, no matter what country you come from, I can promise you, you will find somebody else from your country within the city, probably within a 60 mile radius, to be fair. So it's never far away. And also as well, um, it's important to remember that no matter how far away you are from anywhere, with the advances of technology, you mentioned earlier about the auditions, some of them being done on Skype and Zoom, you know, you're only ever really a click away from, from home or from speaking to somebody at the central um, or friends and family. So really important. Um, and just one more as well about accommodation. If, if you are struggling, you're not sure where to go, head over to uh, postgrad.com. Um, we have partners such as Urban S to our zone one only, uh, Fresh Living, um, just a couple of private accommodation partners that you could look at. Okay, Scott, um, in terms of your courses, um, you, you put a huge emphasis obviously on face-to-face, -face, potentially auditioning if it's possible, obviously because of the circumstances. Distance learning, is that an option? Part-time, is that an option? What's the rules around that? So uh, a small number of our courses are available to take part-time. However, in terms of distance learning, um, we've, we've, we very much focus on the face-to-face -face where we can. Um, we don't at the moment, obviously there was slub, some slight kind of flexibility to this during kind of the, the height of the pandemic, I'd say. Um, but now we are trying to transition as quickly as possible to full-time face-to-face uh, learning at the moment. So I think for this term, uh, we're somewhere around 75%, um, but we are hoping that as soon as possible that can move to 100%. We do appreciate that the nature of the courses that we offer, the nature of the experience that we offer, and of course, that really important part of what we do, that practical, hands-on kind of nature of the courses, and also that, that industry networking, we do always feel that it's best done in person yeah. but of course there are some real advantages to some of the online elements and actually um, we've learned a lot as I mentioned in the presentation during the pandemic of some some really real benefits actually for certain uh, units for certain types of learning uh, where online can really enhance yeah. the experience so we're, we're not going to completely abandon uh, certain small bits of online where it's really added value but predominantly it's a very face-to-face -face learning experience I would say. Yeah, and I think given the, the the sector as well, the subject area, you know, creative and performing arts, I think most people would accept that obviously it needs to be a face to face course and you're you're optimizing the level of which you're going to learn as well by doing that face to face. So um, good question. And thank you for feeding that one in, whoever that was. Um, we've got a question here in the Q&A. Um, do you feed into any local and national businesses? Um, obviously, you mentioned earlier about a few of your students working on the set for Bohemian Rhapsody. You mentioned Judy Dench and obviously other businesses as well, The Crown, the film. Uh, who do you work with? Do you work with anyone local that you could say, right, yeah, you know, we have a relationship with them where some of our top students have gone there? We've got a number of really, really close and many uh, formal relationships with businesses, which predominantly, I'd say, are in two different um, groups. We have 
what, who are our placement providers. So we have a real range of placement providers which operate placements there for a number of our postgraduate courses, but also a number of our undergraduate courses. But with that comes those kind of those more informal networks that we that we have, both our staff have, uh, but also the students develop uh, whilst they're on the course and get exposure to that. But we're also associated, associated with a number of other organisations. So a number of um, key organisations, both in the UK and abroad, um, things like the Association of British Theatre Technicians, uh, for instance, um, the United States Institute of Theatre Technology, for instance, and a number of other organisations. We're also part of Conservatoires UK, the Federation of Drama Schools. So there are a real range of organisations and arts organisations work extremely closely with Central on kind of uh, projects that we, we run as well that, uh, that actually grew hugely during the pandemic actually because everyone was kind of looking to how they could do things more effectively and our students were able to really rise to that challenge but yes we have a real range of different uh, informal and formal uh, relationships with organizations and of course the Hampstead Theatre which is a, a really thriving and exciting theatre is literally the other end of the road to us it's opposite central uh, so we again we have a great relationship with them as well, as well as other local arts organisations like Black Arts, um, Camden uh, People's Theatre and others uh, of the like, really. Yeah, and you can't beat the location. Like I said, there's, we, we speak to many creative arts universities and colleges around the globe, um, and quite often they're having to fight the location, fight where they are. Um, you know, I can't um, simplify enough just how great it is. You know, you guys are in very central London. It's very accessible, international students, there's two major airports, you know, if you want to include Stansted, uh, Luton, other airports, there's, there's many other local airports as well. So, you know, it's very accessible. Um, even students in the UK, trains into Waterloo, into Paddington, very simple. Um, so two more questions then, Scott. Um, two very important ones, I would say. Um, I know you touched upon the scholarship um, mm. section and obviously there's many scholarships that you offer once they've applied and they'll get conditional and unconditional as well. Um, a student here has applied for the Chevening. Uh, let's say uh, a Chevening scholarship. For those of you that don't understand what that is, that are watching, um, it's a UK-backed government initiative to bring international students to the UK. Millions of students over the years have applied for those courses. Um, only a select few, very high-calibre students, actually enrolled. They need a two-one or above, and you have to have had two years professional services experience as well. So very high-calibre. But a lot of the students that come to our website fall under that bracket. Now, a student has asked if they have failed from that and they haven't got that scholarship, or even if they've applied and they're waiting, does that impact on other opportunities? You know, can they still apply for one of your scholarships? Does it matter? Uh, the answer is they absolutely can apply for our other scholarships. We have had students who have come to Central who have had achieving uh, scholarships before, um, but uh, holding an external scholarship like Chevening or other ones uh, doesn't really impact um, your ability to get a scholarship from Central. Um, that's really important, actually, because uh, we know that um, for many international students, <coughs> I beg your pardon, um, the financial barrier to studying is, is a really important one. And so we actually really encourage students to look um, at external sources of funding to complement any other funding they might get from Central or self-funding uh, as well. OK, um, and one final question as well, and it's related to application stages. Um, you mentioned the audition, you mentioned what happens and the process they'll have to follow. How long typically, best case scenario, and I appreciate the students have to be a bit patient because it's not an overnight turnaround. How long typically can you expect from first applying to then auditioning to then being accepted? Can a student expect to wait? Three. Good question. And, and the, the answer is there is no um, easy answer, I would say. It really depends on what time of the year someone applies. There are peaks and troughs of the application process whereby certain courses, but also more in general, uh, a real raft of applications do come in. I would say that uh, for postgraduate applications, anywhere from kind of November through to I would say March, April are the kind of real high points for postgraduate applications. Of course, we get many before and many after, but typically we do try and respond to an application within a few weeks. Um, but what we can do is, especially where courses are, are very, very popular and, and, and for some reason, uh, certain years, different courses kind of get have a real bumper year. Yeah. 
that can kind of um, increase the amount of time slightly. So we can kind of uh, look at applications a bit more closely at that point. But we do try and turn around the interviews and auditions quite quickly. We, we will always give uh, applicants a, a little bit of a choice of dates so that we can kind of find things that will suit them as well. Um, but typically, uh, again, with offers, we try and turn them around quite quickly. But what I would say it's really important is when we do um, uh, audition or interview an applicant, there is a number of different things that can happen. Now, we can make an offer to an applicant. Uh, we might think the applicant is not suitable or depending on the time of the year or other circumstances, we may place an applicant onto a wait list. That is a possibility for some okay courses especially the most popular courses now what we do try and do with wait lists is we do try and give the applicant an idea of when they will get a response uh, if they are on that wait list when like a decision will be made at some point but sometimes we can use wait lists for instance if we just haven't seen enough applicants yet for that course to kind of uh, gauge suitability or it might be that we are waiting to see a few more uh, or the time of the year might dictate that as well so it's nothing never to worry about but you know there is that possibility when we are uh, looking at so if you're on a wait list that that uh, time seal it can be lengthened a little bit but we do keep in constant contact uh, with anyone who is either on a wait list or someone who we have made an offer to as well okay that makes sense perfect now um we have had a few questions coming through on facebook messenger and facebook chat and, and linkedin as well um i'm just conscious of time a, a lot of the questions are relatively close in terms of what they cover a lot of questions coming in about scholarships a lot of questions coming in about application writing you know how how long they should have to write what i would say is um we have got all your information all your details um scott and myself will reach out to you in the coming days um just to see if there's any questions that you might have just remember if you're watching this on demand it might be in a week's time it might be in a few months time please don't hesitate to reach out as well you know we have got your details we will reach out to you like i mentioned and so on from there uh scott for now thank you very much um you know it's been fantastic great insightful session great presentation as well thank you um i'm now just going to explain a little bit about postgrad.com so scott you can pop the camera off for now and and that's your job done thank you very much um, in terms of postgrad.com and what do we offer, a lot of what Scott's just mentioned there, um, a lot of it is covered under our website. Um, you know, Central, Royal Central School of Speech and Drama do have a presence on our website. So please head over, have a little look at the website, have a look at the profile page. All the information that Scott's just mentioned is on there. Um, that information um, is supplied by them. Yeah, um, all the uh, information is up to date. All the courses are up to date. So if you are interested, head over to there. We have had over 10 million students over the last few years go on and apply. Um, over 200 different countries for you to study at. Obviously, this is a UK special this week, but we have over 200 countries that um, have universities that work with us. We mentioned the Chevening Scholarship earlier on. Um, that is one of our partners, along with the Marshall Scholarships as well. The website's got great advice on accommodation, visas, careers, English language support. Again, Scott mentioned the English language test earlier, vital at the moment with international students coming over to the UK. And an opportunity to win 500 pounds. Now, by signing up to this week, you are eligible for a free 500 pound bursary. You do need to send in your applications. Um, the, the boat's just been missed for this year, but anybody applying for a course for 22 right now, or even 23 are eligible for a 500 pound bursary off their tuition fee. So anyone around the world, any course looking to study anything you like, please get your applications through. We will be sending through a link with a little bit more information on that. So please don't worry if you can't find it initially, have a look at your emails, we will send you it. And finally, what is coming up in the UK Festival Week? So tomorrow we have an agricultural special with the Royal Agricultural University. Thursday, we are with the University of Swansea. We have a healthcare special, very popular. And Friday is a study in Wales special with the University of Wales, Trinity St. David. Um, for now, thank you very much. It's been a great session. I hope to see you all for the rest of the week. Myself and Scott from Central will reach out to you. And if you have any issues, concerns or questions, please do let me know. But for now, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you for the rest of the week. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>